Guys, look, it's Meg. Meg, you gonna be in this video? I'm gonna, I'm here. It's a beautiful day in Virginia, and we have a, well, a block structure sort of thing. So, what's the next step, Meg? We need to paint the outside of this. Yeah, we're so. gonna put a rubber membrane on the, on the outside. Yeah. Using what? Dry lock. Dry lock, yep. We're gonna do that on the outside of the wall so that we can backfill all of this and then our structure building will be safer so that we don't have a, a hole. We don't have to go... Are we doing the whole thing anyway or are we gonna stop at some point? I think we're gonna stop right above the ground level because we are gonna be adding some sort of decorative uh, veneer on top of this stuff. So we're gonna, st like on this side, yep. we're gonna stop like right here. Yeah, and just diagonal it up that way, go with the ground level. All right. Good? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see it, Meg. What do you got? Well, this isn't gonna take very long. Famous last words. How many coats do you think? It says two. How's the coverage? Um, pretty good. I mean, it's not... Just be generous with it. It's not going into... Uh-oh, my foot's stuck. Um, not going into all the little crevices very much. No? Um, well, yeah, it is. Whoa. It's probably the guy's fault who did the block, because the blocks are... <laughs> I mean, that guy. <laughs> it's they're not perfectly like even all the way. I don't know. We just went with the lowest bidder. <laughs> yeah, blame it on that guy, John. It's his fault. All right, Meg. Can I leave you to it? You gonna do a good job here? Before I do, I, I got a question for you. Um, this is from our viewers. Where is Meg? I've gotten that quite a few times now. They must have missed the episode when you said, hey, I, I got a full-time job. Yes, so. I, I got a full-time job. So John's kind of at this solo now. Kind of. Except for the weekends, Uh huh. like right now. Um, I'm working full-time. I have a job as a low-voltage systems engineer, Ooh. which means I do a lot of work on the computer. Yeah. And I design systems that are low voltage. So nurse call systems, security systems. Solar systems? No, not solar systems. Anything that's low voltage. How about fire alarm? Fire alarm, wandering systems. Wandering? Yeah. You keep people in place, huh? Yeah. She keeps, uh, she keeps people in and she also keeps people out. Yeah, so... That's what Meg's doing. She draws lines on the computer. Yeah, intrusion systems, CCTV, access control. Yep. I designed those systems. Right. So... We're gonna have all those in our house. That way if anybody tries to wander out, I'm gonna zap them. <laughs> yeah, we'll put a wandering system in our house, John. I can give you an ankle monitor. Yeah, can we do a I'll... density sensor too? Oh, density sensors. Um... No, we're not doing density sensors. And this is a remote job, so you're working out of yes. the RV right now, right? Yeah, I work out of the RV f for a company out of DC. DC, she said, as she turned away from the microphone. And uh, so that's why we shifted gears, guys. This structure, yes, we're doing this root cellar, but sitting on top of this nice wall is going to be a about a 12 by 16 ish or 11 by 16 i forgot the dimensions um structure that will it's going to look like our shed that we built down below i got all the lumber cut for it already but it's going to house our water it's going to house our inverter chargers batteries all that stuff for the solar system um yeah water softener is going to be in the root cellar we have the pump already that's going to be in the root cellar 
Got a cool pump. I'm excited to show you guys. All right, Meg, we're not going to watch you paint this whole wall. Thanks for showing up today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You bet. Anything else you want me to tell your fans? <laughs> I'm here. I'm working hard, just not on this stuff. Not with me anymore. Yeah. All right, give me a kiss. Mm. Okay. All right, about to fill the cores up at the house site, but before I do that, I want to make a good funnel to do that. Um, like every other or every two cores, <clears throat> 24 inches, there's a piece of rebar, half inch rebar in the middle. Those are the cores I'm going to fill. You don't have to fill these. So it's like you got one, skip two, and then another one. Sometimes it's every other one, but it's a 24 inch minimum. So the ones with rebar, they need to be filled. I got the concrete to do that. Um, and I want to make a... So I'm going to be mixing it with my mixer, but then I'll have like a funnel, like a hopper, if you will. So I could shovel it into here, work it down with like another piece of rebar, and that's it. Um, I'll be doing a lot of this too. I thought it'd be good to make a proper funnel to do all this. Now, there's two sides to this. This side is like the skinny side, I call it. It's five and a half by five. And then this side... Is a little bit smaller and you want to make sure yeah this is five by four and three quarters so we're gonna make it for the smaller side in case some of this this is a uh, face up um, so yeah we're gonna just kind of frame something out out of some rebar some tin I had laying around and uh, we'll get this easier to shovel in it should make work a lot easier okay should I use angle I don't think I should use angle I think I'm going to make a frame out of rebar and then have some pegs that are like protruding down. So it kind of stabilizes the whole thing. And I'm just going to tack this with some welds and the walls will be out of tin. Yeah, let's just do it. I don't really have a plan here. Let's just roll with it. Basically, just make a small square and then the biggest, bigger square like up here and then put on walls. Easy peasy. Builder going. Little F7 action. Bend these in, get it just right so that it slips in easy. Cool. We'll cut these excess off and mix the next part.
that's enough to as a target to get some concrete scoops in and it'll stand up like that or so I'll have some diagonals like here to there and here to there and then we'll line the inside oh damn that's hot with some tin all right all right let's weld this up the trommel I made okay so we'll use that as the sides be a little bit more durable Okay, lords and ladies, look at this piece. Oh yeah, we got ourselves the Funnel 5000. Uh, Pre-orders are available now at getyourselfameg.com slash funnel. That's a joke, don't go there. Okay, so, got super globby over here. I don't know how to weld, I just make stuff stick together. There you go. Look at that thing. Thing's a brick. That's not going anywhere. Look at that. All right, that'll do the job. So I made these these legs so big so that it goes down into the core. And the core is like there there's a handle side and then there's a skinny side. So if if the skinny side is up, then so it'll fit in there just fine. But if the, if the handle side is up, then, you know, that'll fit in there too. Okay. There we go. Look at that, Mom. Okay, so we got a funnel and a way to fill up the cores. So that's enough. I just want to scoop the shovel and throw the concrete in there and fill it up and then take it out and smooth it out. The only thing I might do, I might add in, remember there's rebar 
like you look in the middle of the cores there's a piece of rebar but it's not necessarily in the center like it's leaning one way or the other maybe i'll get something that keeps it in the center i don't know so cool let's go put this to the test hey pretty lady come here say hi to everybody hi friends all right where's carmen come here carmen come here come here say hi to everybody all right so we're up at the top of the mountain guys we have had quite the winter weather um we had about seven to eight inches of snow lasted for a while we had some ice problems with the roads um it was a mess and then it rained a lot um we did some traveling so that's why i haven't posted a video in a number of weeks here so today we are pouring the cores to the uh, block wall here um, now we're filling the cores that have the rebar so it'd be that one and then you skip to there's another one skip to there's another one skip to there's another one see what i mean so here's the plan i made this little hopper looking thing yesterday oh, which is going to be very handy i think i'm going to be glad i did that um, i got a bunch of tools over here in willie and what i'm pouring today is concrete not mortar you can do either i've researched i like the way this stuff mixes better and i like the aggregate that's gonna it's gonna provide that little bit of a uh, little bit of gravel that's in there so we have 52 bags a little bit over a yard worth of concrete here that i brought up got my mixer got the generator a bunch of tools and fuel and got my shovel and um oh, got my respirator Okay, now let's go over here and see how this little funnel thing works. And I want to show you. I painted it yesterday just for um, rust purposes, and I didn't film that thing in the middle. I'll show you what that thing is. So every core has, not every core, but every, every third core has a piece of rebar. And this is overkill. This is every two feet. 8, 16, 24. So it's 24 inch on center rebar. That's what I calculated for this, um, this height wall. But anyway, when I fill these cores, yes, you have the, um, the piece of rebar. I want it to stay in the middle, but it's not perfectly plumb after I get up nine courses. So, so I made the funnel here to have this. I don't even know what this is. I found it in my little drunk junk container of hardware. But when I'm ready, I will just guide it in here, reach through, grab the rebar. Oh, that works perfectly. Come on, gimbal. There we go. Look at that. Okay, it's holding that rebar right in the middle. And then as I fill up all the cores with concrete, that thing should stay put. And then I could simply just... Uh, extract this and then go three more down and do the next one so i like it i like it. it's just made out of scrap rebar and scrap material from one of uh, those barrels so all right let's talk real quick meg finished doing all this painting um this was the dry lock it has a rubber acrylic type paint that prevents moisture from getting in we went pretty much all the way down to the footer we didn't really have to go down that far um and we gotta have a talk here don't even say french drain it is completely unnecessary i might as well just throw my money in the garbage if i were to install a french drain here now the reason is this type of soil it does not perk okay water will not go through this clay and that is, I could prove that by just looking. The roots that you see along the side, they only go down max 12 inches. Um, I can't really show you because of the sun. But over here, there is barely any roots. Like there's just no water down there. It doesn't perk. And I could also so, show you over here, these septic tanks. This one's still just floating around. I got to finish up this project. But this is from all the snow melt and from all the rain and everything else. This has maybe gone down two inches since it's been sitting in here for like about a month. So I got to pump this out. It's just not going into the soil. So my point here is you could kind of see it. See the topsoil there? When it rains here, it goes into that topsoil, hits that clay, and then just shoots down the mountain. We're at the very top here, guys. 
there is nothing above this and there is no um there's no water table so i've dug in this area plenty i've dug in the house plenty it does not fill up when you dig you could just dig 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 and all you're going to hit is clay or bedrock so french drain absolutely not um i did put this dry lock on here in case we get some gutter splash and stuff like that and the water starts seeping down that way yeah maybe but i don't anticipate any water going all the way down and then creeping back in so if that happens i'll eat my words and show you but that's really um just not going to happen so in, instead of doing a french drain what i did is just in case just in case we do have a water issue we have a low spot over there um, and i dug a trench from here all the way over here all the way through let me take you over there goes all the way this way still needs a little bit of fine work to do it goes all the way down the mountain and it just it's going to shoot that way <sighs> Now with this drain, in case we get like torrential biblical rain and it gets in somehow, some way or another, um, it will go to the low spot, it'll drain out with gravity, no pump required. I thought about doing a sub pump, but I am also going to have a the water containers there. This will be the emergency overflow drain for those. And... There's going to be next to it in the corner over there, there's going to be a water softener, which I'm going to pipe the discharge over here and go into that gravity feed drain. I don't want to pipe the brine extraction into a sub pump because that would probably ruin a pump. So that's the reason I chose a gravity fed system over a sub pump. Sub pump would be nice. You could just like pipe it wherever and shoot it out. But I just went with gravity, hit a few rocks, got them out of the way, went that way. So I'm gonna stick some of that two inch line, the effluence line, that black stuff, and I'm gonna just shoot it that way. I went onto my neighbor's property a little bit, but I called him and he made me feel silly for even asking. So it's no problem there. Okay, let's, uh, I gotta go run down and get my J-bolts, but this is gonna be a very long day of wheelbarrowing concrete from over there to here and into the walls. I think I'm going to do the mixing over there just so I have move, uh, room to move around. All right, let's get set up. Let's get going. further doing these little things like digging a little ditch for the wheel to go down into so that you can drain this easier makes the day go better don't use this stuff now um this is why i had to delay this project because i needed a warm day without freezing and the reason you can't use that stuff is right here okay that metal bar iron and that stuff don't mix it'll ruin that iron and jeopardize the whole integrity of it just a little share of knowledge that i've discovered while researching
It's crazy. As anticipated, two bags per core. So I'm over here working, right? Remember that neighbor I told you about that was awesome? That's like, you could take down whatever trees you want for your view. Yeah, he's over there with his, his brand new D1 dozer, just clearing a view for us. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> Where'd he go? There he goes. And it's not just a dozer. This thing is a souped up D1 um, that has a, what I call a destroy anything you run into attachment. It's a, uh, just a, forestry thing. Hey Maddie, you're gonna have to stay, honey. Where's Carmen? Carmen! Where's Carmen? Okay, there's Carmen. Hey, you gotta stay. They're not gonna listen. Oh, here we go. I mean, it just eats the tree. So he's clearing out all the little trees, which is gonna make it really great for the big trees. Um, but he ran over a poplar that I was like, hey, I want that. And he said, well, take whatever you want. I'll leave the big ones and you could just take whatever you want.
Jerry. I wish I could get closer, guys. I just can't. I think it's so cool. My goodness. I mean, how do you, how do I meet these amazing people in my life? Gosh. I mean, he's taking down some like six, eight inch, 10 inch trees. And I, I told him, I told him to not to destroy the larger trees he's taking down. Like if he wants to knock them down, cool, but I'll grab them and chop them up and go mill them. Since, I mean, I didn't even plan on this, but this is just extra lumber for me. This is uh this is really nice and it wasn't even asked for, so. I mean, the guy must be related to Tyler or something. <laughs> Gosh, it's a cool machine. I kind of want to drive it, but I, I don't know. I think he's still, he's still itching to like drive his new machine around. Yep, there goes that tree. It just blows me away how cool people are. I moved, I, I'll share something. I moved out here to get away from people and I'm finding like rural living, those are the people I wanna be around. They are just great people. So this is the neighbor on the back side of me here. He said to me a while back, hey, now, John, you're building a house. That's my land, like the hill over here. Uh, you know, feel free to take out any trees you want. I said, well, thank you. That's that's really nice. Yeah, maybe that'd, that'd be great. We could cut out a couple windows here and there and have some view of the of the mountains. There's a really pretty view. So, yeah, he recently got this D1 dozer and he has this attachment on it. That's like a an earth or a, a forestry mulcher that you could just run it into a tree and it eats the tree and spits it out. And that's what he's doing right now. I didn't ask him to. I actually called him yesterday because I was digging a trench and I thought I might end up a little bit on his land over there. And he was like, yeah, don't, don't be silly. Do what you gotta do. I come up here today and I start pouring. I go grab a bite to eat and I come back and he's just making a view for me just because he feels like it. 
So, really cool. Very fortunate. All right, here we are guys. Um, office is over there. House site here. This is the solar field. And we have a east to west sky. We left this uh, beautiful black walnut because in the winter time, the sun, you know, goes through as it gets closer and closer to spring and summer, it gets above that tree. So there's no light interference or, or anything like that, or tree interference with the light. And everything else that was up there is pretty much cleared away. So he dropped a bunch of cedars and stuff on the ground. There's still plenty more, goodness gracious. So this area can breathe now, and, and we have our field ready for the sunlight. It's late afternoon, it's probably three o'clock winter, and I got a get this concrete in the holes so it can cure up. So let's head over there and I got a better idea. Instead of doing this wheelbarrow, let me tell you what's going on. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do, this thing pushes out the concrete pretty quick. It can uh, mix two bags at once. What I think I'm gonna do is throw that bucket on the track loader and mix like maybe eight bags or so put it right in the bucket, drive it over to the far side since I'm on the far side and position the machine so that maybe I could just stand in it 
and shovel it into the uh, ex into the remaining holes. So let's try that. We'll try to make it easier on ourselves. I think this machine was used for concrete at one time because it chipped all of it out of that bucket when I first got it. But all right, let's switch it up. Let's get the grapple off. Let's get the bucket on and we will knock this out. I got it soupy, um, intentional so that it really fills in those voids down there. So what is that, a low slump? I should have done this from the get-go. This is much better, just having it here, a big amount. So what was that, eight bags of concrete? I could fit more, but you gotta watch, you gotta watch backing up or going forward on a decline. All right, there we go. See, then I can just, uh, funnel works so good. I know I'm making y'all nervous with the walk on the edge thing, but I am part spider monkey. We're in supersonic mode now, baby. Ooh, 
All right, just got finished up, guys. Check out our new view. There's gonna be a huge window right there. I don't know if we've mentioned it before. I think we have, but there's a five by five foot window facing north, which is that way. And those are the Clinch Mountains. Guys, this picture doesn't give it justice as to how much this has cleared up. And what Gary did with his machine, I just, I can only imagine what that could cost if you were to, if you were to hire out and get that done with that humongous uh, dozer and forestry mulcher. But, my goodness, let's go walk over here. So it's all chipped up and everything. I'm gonna salvage what I can for, for wood and um, we're gonna take some more out. You can see some scraggly looking trees along the line there. So it's trees that are lower that the tops of them are kind of right in the path of that beautiful mountain view. And um, you know, doing things like this to the forest, you know, I know a lot of people are like, save every tree you can, but it's like when they are so thick like this, it's really an unhealthy forest. Clearing out and letting the mature or younger adult trees um, really take over and become mother trees to others is really the healthy way to go. So this is good for the forest. A lot of nutrients went into the soil and gosh, that view is just amazing. Back here, um, the office got all the cores done. And um, next week, or the week after, whenever, I'm um, gonna get the water line through and get that all going. And um, I got some septic lines that are gonna go out. We're gonna finish hooking up that. We're gonna get the fiber line through and we're gonna do the drain um, and all that good stuff, plus some cleanup that I wasn't planning on doing just yet, but whatever, just roll with it. So guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again really soon. Take care. I'm alive. You're alive. No, I said I'm alive. Not oh, alive. Okay. Yeah. You're alive and live. All right. Hey, Meg. Hi. <laughs> and Meg is dominating the wall right now. Is that what you call what I'm doing? I don't know. Dominating? Meg's... I'm more like getting stuck in it's mud. It's Meg in the hole. <laughs> Is this a tree? There's a tree? Oh no, that's just a dead branch. Meg doesn't get outside much. <laughs> she gets excited about sticks. <laughs> See? Oh! Don't be broken. <laughs>